Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at variable acceleration in one dimension so we can answer questions from exercise 8c. So what we're going to be doing in the next three sections then is using the techniques of differentiation and integration we're going to be moving through the variables of displacement, velocity and acceleration. So starting with displacement then, if we want to consider the rate at which we are displacing our particle by, or the rate at which we are moving from one position to another, and the speed at which we are doing that, then effectively we're considering there the velocity. So we can therefore say that the rate of change of displacement is equal to the velocity. And we can also do the same for velocity as well. If we consider the rate at which our velocity is changing, um, then we're considering a change in velocity, and a change in velocity is calculated by how much acceleration it has. So the rate of change of velocity uh, is equal to acceleration, so therefore if we differentiate velocity, we get acceleration. So the way that I like to remember it is through the chain of S differentiates to V, and V differentiates to A, and we can obviously go back using integration as well. So if you integrate acceleration, you get velocity, and if you integrate velocity, you get displacement. Okay, so let's get started on the question here then. So we've got a particle is moving in a straight line with acceleration uh, t given by acceleration a is equal to cos 2 pi t meters per second squared. So therefore, the acceleration of this particle will be changing as time goes on dependent upon the value of cos um, at that specific time t. Uh, the velocity of the particle at time t zero is 1 over 2 pi meters per second, and we have three follow-up questions from that. So you will need to be bringing in the techniques of differentiation and integration that you learnt in pure maths to this topic here. So if we have acceleration is equal to cos 2 pi t, and we need to work out a, an expression for velocity, then we need to remember that it's the integral of acceleration that will give you velocity, so we need to integrate both sides here. The integral of acceleration is velocity, and the integral of cos 2 pi t, you'll remember that from pure maths, is 1 over 2 sine 2 pi t, plus c, because we always need the plus c for an integration there. And they will generally give you some boundaries to plug in for t and v, so you can work out what c is. So plugging in t equals 0 and v equals 1 over 2 pi, we get this expression here. So if we replace that there, and we've replaced t with 0. Uh, sine of 0, though, is just 0, so that effectively just cancels out. So c is 1 over 2 pi. So therefore, we can write that the velocity is equal to 1 over 2 pi sine 2 pi t plus 1 over 2 pi. Lovely. Moving on to the next question, in the maximum speed of a particle, well, let's take the velocity. Now, we know that the maximum value that sine um, will reach its peak at is 1. So what we'll do then is we'll plug in the value for 1. Well, it's not going to be, yeah, it's going to be the value for 1. So replacing the whole of sine 2 pi t with 1, because that is the maximum value that sine can take. So replacing the whole thing there with 1, 1 over 2 pi plus 1 over 2 pi, that will equal 1 over pi. So the maximum velocity that this particle has is 1 over pi meters per second. Sometimes you could be asked to find times when this speed is achieved. Um, so in which case you would need to find the value for 2 pi t that will set the whole thing equal to 1. Um, so just be aware of that. OK, so moving on to the last part, then find the distance travelled in the first three seconds. Well, so far we've got acceleration, we also have velocity, still don't have a formula for displacement though, so what we'll have to do then is we'll have to integrate the velocity curve here, so the velocity expression. So what we're going to be doing then is we're going to be integrating the velocity and use the limits of t equals 0 and t equals 3. Remember that the area under the velocity time curve is the distance travelled. So this is the velocity time curve, and we're working out here effectively the integral between 0 to 3, so effectively this area under the curve. 
Now we're really lucky here that actually the whole curve here is on top of the x-axis here because if any of it was on the bottom of the x-axis and went underneath onto the negative y-coordinates then that would effectively mean that the particle will stop moving from left to right and it will start to turn around and travel backwards and then when it moves above the x-axis again it will start to move forwards so luckily the whole journey for this particle here has been moving in one continuous direction yes it will have been slowing down and speeding up slowing down and speeding up but in actual fact it's just going to be traveling in one direction if the question was work out the distance and some of the graph did go below the x-axis then what we'd have to do there is split it up and work out the area above and the area below. Alternatively, if the question was rephrased and it was work out the displacement, then we would just do a straightforward integration between 0 to 3 because then the movement backwards would, um, would kind of um, not be counted in our displacement. It would just be the start to finish displacement there. So we're very lucky here. Um, that uh, the whole of our graph here is above the x-axis. Otherwise, we'd have to split it up into area below, area above, and then add the two areas together. Let's get on to it then. Let's get on to the actual maths of doing this question then. So we've got v equals 1 over 2 pi sine 2 pi t plus 1 over 2 pi. And we are looking to integrate between the boundary of 3 and 0 here. It's the first three seconds, so you know it's going to start from 0 and go up to 3. Let's now go ahead and integrate there. So we can, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. We can pull out the 1 over 2 pi. That will make the integration a bit easier. And the answer here is going to be 1 over 2 pi minus 1 over 2 pi cos 2 pi t. And then the 1 will integrate to t. And now we've got to plug in the boundaries of 3 and 0. So substitute in those limits. Calculate the individual values. And then put them all back together again. And the answer here is going to be 3 over 2 pi meters, or 0.477 meters um, to three significant figures there. Great, there we are. So that's how we answer those sorts of questions there then. So using integration, you can start from acceleration, work your way through to velocity, and also work your way through to displacement, um, integrating again to solve all sorts of different questions. Let's do it the other way around now. Let's go through the um, ways in which you can differentiate from one function to get acceleration. So in this question here, we're setting it up with a particle of mass 6 kilograms is moving on the positive x-axis. At time t seconds, the displacement s of the particle from its origin is given by s equals 2t to the power of 3 over 2 plus e to the minus 2t over 3 meters. So... Let's get to it then. Part A is find the velocity of the particle when t equals 1.5. And part B is given that the particle is acted on a single force of variable magnitude f, which acts in the direction of the positive x-axis. Find the value of f when t equals 2. Now I'm thinking here, if we've got a force here, at some point for this last question here, we're going to use f equals ma. Well, I will do that when we get to it. Let's do part A first. We've got a formula for displacement, but we need to work out the velocity of the particle at 1.5 seconds. So we're going to need to differentiate our function here. So rewriting it so that it looks more um, friendly to differentiate. And now we can go ahead and differentiate. So remember, for the t to the power of 3 over 2, we multiply that power to the front, reduce the power by 1. And then for e, e stays the same but then the minus 2 also gets multiplied to the front there. So using your knowledge of pure maths uh, differentiation, you'll have to differentiate this um, to this. No need for plus c on this because differentiation does not need a plus c. And now we can plug in the value of 1.5. So substituting in 1.5, get your calculator out, work that out, and you get 3.64 metres per second. Okay, great. So um, given that the particle, uh, yeah, so we were thinking about f equals ma for this. We've already got um, the velocity here. We need to differentiate it again to get acceleration. So moving through differentiation again for the first part, multiplying the power to the front and reducing the power by one. And for the second part here, e differentiates to itself, but then the minus two will also get multiplied to the front. So it's three over two t 
power minus one half plus four over three e to the minus two t. So we're looking, find to, looking to find the value of the force when t is equal to two. So what we'll do then is we'll set up, uh, we'll plug in uh, t equals two to find the value of the acceleration. That's 1.0850. And then we can use F equals MA. We know the mass is six kilograms. That's why it was given at the start. So force equals mass times acceleration. And we get 6.51 newtons rounded to three significant figures. All right, then. so we've seen a question where we've got integration happening. We've seen a question where we've got differentiation happening. Um, so those are the two different cases that can happen in these types of questions here. Your turn to have a go at a question then, pause the video and try this question out. Right then, let's have a go at this question then. So we've got a formula for acceleration, sine 3 pi t, um, and at time t seconds, velocity v, displacement s, given that when t equals 0, v equals 1 over 3 pi, and s is equal to 1. Find an expression for v in terms of t, Okay, let's get started. So what we're going to be doing to find velocity if we already have acceleration is integrating acceleration. So therefore, we're going to be integrating sine 3 pi t. Now, we remember the rules from A-level maths, and it's going to be v uh, as the integral for acceleration. And then the integral of sine 3 pi t is going to be 1 over 3 pi. Uh, minus, because sine integrates back round to minus cos 3 pi t, uh, and then it's going to be um, plus c. And now we can plug in the uh, initial conditions, so we're going to have here um, t equals 0 and v equals 1 over 3 pi. So plugging in 1 over 3 pi on the left hand side equals 1 over 3 pi times by cos of 0. Now cos of 0 is 0, so we're going to be moving, sorry, cos of 0 is 1 rather. So we're going to be adding the 1 over 3 pi onto the other side, so it's going to be 2 over 3 pi as our value for c. So therefore, finding an expression for v, we'll write our final answer as v equals 1 over 3 pi cos 3 pi t, um, and then it's going to be plus, oops, plus 2 over 3 pi. Lovely, there we are. So that's the answer to the first question then. We've worked out the plus c from that integration as well. Find the maximum speed of the particle. Well, the maximum speed of the particle is when cos is going to equal 0. Cos reaches a maximum point at time t equals 0. So we'll set this whole thing here equal to, so when t equals 0, so therefore the maximum value for the cos expression here is going to be 1, and that's at the time t equals 0. So therefore the maximum speed here is going to be minus 1 over 2 pi times by 1. 1 is the maximum value that cos can be, plus 2 over 3 pi. So the maximum speed here is going to be pi over 3. Lovely. And part C finds a, an expression for S in terms of T. This question here is very similar to the first one, isn't it? Um, notice here how when we draw the graph for, um, for this thing here, all of the graph is going to be above the x-axis because 2 pi um, is going to take it far above the x-axis. And then it's going to be coming down by a, a magnitude of 1 over 3 pi. So it's never going to go under the x-axis. So we can just do a straightforward integral. Um, find its expression first in terms of t. So we're going to integrate. Um, we, we don't have any boundaries because we don't want to find the maximum distance. We just want a, an expression for s. So in fact, it doesn't matter that it's under the x-axis or not. Uh, so we're going to integrate 1 over 3 pi cos 3 pi t plus 2 over 3 pi, and that's with respect to t. So therefore, displacement is going to equal 1 over 9 pi 
times by sine 3 pi t. And then the second part here is going to be plus 2 pi over 3 t. And then the next part is going to be plus c. And we now also know that when t equals 0, s equals 1. So plugging in the value for t equals 0 and s equals 1, we're going to get 1 on the left-hand side, sine of 0, well, that's 0. t is equal to 0, so that will be 0 in that component there. So that's just equal to c. So c is 1. So therefore, our final answer for this question here is going to be 1 over, whoops, the pi needs to be squared there, 1 over 9 pi squared times by sine 3 pi t, and then it's going to be plus 2 pi over 3 t, and then it's going to be plus 1 because that's the value for c. Lovely, there we are. So that's the answer to this question here then. So have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 8c. Um, plenty of the exam style questions, the, um, the problem solving type questions. And ask your teacher for help if you need any. You may need to refresh yourself on the differentiation and integral rules. But that's all good revision because you're going to need to know it for the exams in the summer anyway. Lovely, thanks very much for watching.